Hello, welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja, and today I'll briefly introduce a novel from Senegal by Osman Sembin. Was published in 1960, God's Bits of Wood. Now I'm not going to even attempt to read its French title, but the novel was originally published in French and then translated. Um, into English, and I have worked only with the English version. Now, I've taught this novel, and I've actually also published about it, uh, so I thought I should talk a bit about this novel. Now, the backdrop of the novel, of course, is the 1947-48 Dakar Senegal Railway Workers Strike, and it's really important to know that. So let's take a look at some aspects of the strike, what was it about, and then we'll come back and talk about the book. This is a free database on uh, the history of the West Af African Railway Workers' Strike, and I'll post a link to it in the uh, description of the video, but I just wanted to use it to clarify what the goals were. So, you know, uh, here are the goals that are listed and the most important thing was that the French system was a tiered system. So there were top-end uh, employees who were, of course, of European descent. And then there were the mid-level workers, which have a, had a hierarchy. These were permanent jobs you could get in and then get promoted over time. And then there was a large pool of temporary workers who had no purpose or no way of being assimilated in the main workforce. So one of the fights was that the temporary auxiliary workers should be moved into uh, the permanent jobs. And, and the, here are some of the conditions. To give the indemnity zone benefit, supplement to wages intended to offset geographical distances and cost of living to all eligible employees. Now this was given to the European workers but not to the African workers. So this resource, I highly recommend it. If you read through it, you will know. It also explains why the strike succeeded. Uh, and the novel, of course, captures that, and we'll talk about it. But um, this website and resource, I think, would be a good additional resource to understand, actually, the historical event, the strike itself, and then read the novel more carefully. So as you noticed, uh, this was a massive strike, almost lasted a year, and uh, covered a vast expense as well. I mean, just take a look at how far the railway line spread and how many people had to come together to make the strike successful. So if you look at the map of the railway tracks, the, the darker Niger railway track uh, ex has a total distance of 1,276 kilometers. And that was almost the distance which was covered in the novel and during the Dakar railway strike of 1947-48. And uh, if we start from what is current day Senegal and then it goes into Mali. Now the strike, the workers had to strike all the way, the local unions from, from Dakar all the way to Bamako, right? And all the major cities, Kita, Thies, and Dakar, they are mentioned in the novel. The famous march of women is from Thies, okay? Now just keep in mind the expense of the railway line, the number of workers, and that all of them, all the local unions, went on a strike and were able to sustain the strike. The only union that broke away was somewhere on the Ivory Coast, and they were the only ones who break away. So this was the expense, the geographical expense of the Docker Railway strike, and that's what makes it all the more fascinating that it succeeded. So now that we are slightly familiar with the geography and uh, the actual history of the strike, I think the novel does a great job of not just giving us the historical account of the strike itself, 
but the, through the lives and actions of its characters, it teaches us one extremely important thing, and that is what would it take for a strike to succeed. So the plot is very simple. We are introduced to the story in the Bokayoku home, right, which is Ibrahim Bokayoku's house, who is supposed to be the leader of this entire movement and is based in the historical figure of Ibrahim Saar, who was the leader. But he doesn't play an active role in the story. The story is mostly driven by different characters in the community, right? He and his love interest, Rama Toile, play a huge role because you know, it tells their struggle and their struggle with the question of polygamy and others. But mostly the story is driven by the actions of people in the community, and it's a large community. Then also the novel tells us the story of what practical role women play during the strike. Not only are they the ones supporting the households, they actually are marching. The Women's March was a prominent historical uh, event of this strike. And by marching in solidarity with the men who work with the railways, what they are also saying is, we are with you, but also they shame men into not going back to work. So they become this strong group who actually holds the strike together. Every single person within the large community, the rural communities, come to the aid of the people. There is fundraising, so the strike succeeds because the community stands together. On the other hand, the strike also teaches us, this novel also teaches us, and you can read my essay on it, I'll post a link to it. Uh, it teaches us what would it take for a strike to succeed. I mean, and the novel anticipates and tells how the, the French tried to break the strike by trying to bribe the leaders, right? They weren't successful in that. By trying to bring in workers to break the strike, they weren't successful in that. The community itself develops a mode of policing for strike breakers, and there is a trial actually held by community leaders against one of them who breaks the strike. And so eventually, you know, the, the French concede partially to the demands of the workers and a compromise is reached. But beyond that, what we learn from the novel, I mean, if you just look at the plot, we start in a household, then there is a decision at the community level to go on strike, then there is a list of demands, then there are negotiations. We are also into the minds of the colonial officials and even their families. I mean, one of their wives dies at the end because she simply absolutely cannot believe that her husband is conceding to these Africans, right? So what we learn also from the beginning of the strike through the lives of different characters and their struggles under a strike, but also their understanding of the colonial situation itself and then the culmination when people come together and eventually when the leaders are called for negotiations. The novel also complicates the, the role uh, of the local elected members, African members who represented them, because majority of them, according to the workers, didn't work for the interest of the people. Now, we do know that uh, Leopold Seno, who was then an elected representative of Senegalese in the French parliament had secretly supported the strike. So that's on historical record. So it's a realistic novel. It tells the story of the strike, but tells it imaginatively as to how did it impact people's lives, what kept them together, how did they sustain it, how did they help each other, which to me is absolutely crucial because I think in the modern time where labor rights are already diminished, unions have been broken, for any uprising against an oppressive system, peaceful uprising to succeed, what the novel teaches us is that the group will have to develop an, a sort of universal lateral solidarity. And there will be intersectionality in it. It can't just be workers. The peasants have to be a part of it. The rural population have to be a part of it. Even in the novel, the children are part of, you know, uh, 
the strike. So overall, a novel set in Senegal by a Senegalese author, Osman Sembin. He's also a filmmaker, so you please see if you can watch some of his films. A novel that also has a love plot between Ibrahim Bokayaku and Rama Tolevich. But I think, by and large, the most important part of the novel is that we learn through different characters the human experience of the strike, the suffering, but also the awareness of the people. How do they become aware of their own conditions? I mean, Ibrahim Bokayaku is an engine driver. He's an engineer. He drive, he he runs a train, right? So he knows how the trains work. A and the possibility that if the workers are not, you know, compensated um, justly, they are the ones who keep the system going. So if they decide the system is not going to work, the system is not. No amount of coercion and force is going to make the system work. The French use all modes of coercion, from domestic to, of course, the policing. Um, there is a scene where women would tell you that since they are dependent on the tap water, the French had stopped the water, right? So they are pressuring the households. And also, of course, in the public sphere, there are arrests. There is actually a camp created for the uh, union leaders who were arrested and actually taken there and tortured there. All of that is depicted here. So if you want to read one novel, that is based in an historical event, which has slightly leftist and socialist leanings, but which imaginatively captures the lives of people involved in the general railway strike of 1947-48. This is the novel. But if you want to teach and read a novel which also didactically is useful in teaching resistance to power, or building solidarity, and what would it take for any constituency to gain their equal rights, or to change an unjust system, this novel can be a great instructive tool. So on so many different levels, I think Osman Sembin's God's Bits of Wood is a wonderful novel to read and could be a wonderful addition to any world literature, post-colonial studies, right? Um, revolutionary studies or social justice studies classroom. A couple of other things uh, peculiar about the novel are also that uh, since it's set in Senegal, so the names of places, there are quite a few references to Islamic heritage because a large segment of Senegalese population, of course, is Muslim. So this is one of the very few African, West African novels in which you will see those references, cultural references to the Quran, the prayers. And then also about the title, the title God's Bits of Wood is uh, um, the lines are attributed to the figure of the grandmother who basically says, you know, what are we as humans, just God's Bits of Wood, which kind of is a, a saying which basically tells teaches us that we human beings and, and what is kind of our insignificance in the grand hierarchy of things. So that's what the novel derives from. So I thought I should add this as, you know, as a little more detail uh, to the novel. That's all I have today. And uh, if you have any questions, of course, please feel free to post them. I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so, so that you know, you, you get notifications of new materials. And as always, I'm deeply grateful to you for your time and thank you so much. I will see you next time and until then, as always, peace and love.